yeah. No uh, what's up? I'm Vocab, and I'm with my friend David, and we're just going to shoot a couple of videos of us talking about uh, the thesis of David's book, Nailed. You probably should have a copy of the book. And, you, you know what? I should. Yeah, but you we sell sold it all out Oh, last well, it night, sold out. So. That's good. So it's online. You can buy it at Amazon. Yep. Uh, I think the price last night it was 666. <laughs> yeah. You get PDF is. on Lulu. Christians love that. that. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Well, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> so, I'm um, uh, a pastor, radio guy, apologist, sort of semi, sometimes rapper, and I like to study this stuff and talk about it, so that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What he said. Yes. Uh, and I'm Dave Fitzgerald, as he said, I'm the author of a book called Nailed, Ten Christian Myths That Show Jesus Never Exists at All, and as crazy as that sounds, and I get that it sounds crazy, um, that's no hyperbole. I really think there wasn't even a guy named Jesus, and... Um, I just want to say, when if you had come up to me and said, yeah. well, I've been telling the people lately, 15 years ago, I would say, oh, that's crazy nonsense, you know. Um, it never even entered my mind that there might have not been a Jesus until I got curious to know what we could really know about what he really said and really did um, and what was just legendary um, additions, add-ons that came later. Um, and, you know, long story short, uh, I got to the point where I'm thinking, well, that just doesn't add up. That just doesn't add up. That just doesn't add up. And now I am one of those guys called a mythicist who thinks that the whole Jesus story that we see in Mark was a an allegory and um, a response to the, the the Roman invasion of Jerusalem. Um, and I don't think I don't think it was a conspiracy. I don't think it was a uh, they were setting out to like do a Joseph Smith number and create a fake religion. I think they were it was a religious movement where they were looking in Hebrew scriptures for words from the Messiah and they their Jesus was speaking to them um, from scripture. So, so that's where I am. So like when you first got into it, who were the people you looked at? Because I know for example Richard Carey's Carrier said yeah. you read Earl Doherty. Yeah. Who did you read that helped turn your? Yeah, Earl Dory was one of my first ones too because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of really crappy books about Jesus myth theory, um, like uh, Joseph Atwell. He's, he's he's the latest one who's got this crazy idea that the Romans invented Jesus. It's just if you're smart enough to come up with this crazy theory, as you'd be smart enough to know it just doesn't work at all. Um, and there's that movie Zeitgeist that came out, and it's just it's just bad. It's operating off outdated scholarships, you know, from the, the 1900s that, that have been debunked completely. And it just makes our job harder, you know, trying to trying to, to put out what the best arguments are. So who else did you read? But Earl, or, Earl, I was going to say, yeah, Earl Doherty was one. Uh, Robert Price was another. Um, there are a lot of Christians I read. Um, Bruce Metzger is probably my favorite one. But does um, Bruce Metzger have... Um Sort of standard works on historical Absolutely. Jesus. Absolutely. Oh well, well yeah, his, yeah. He's, he, yeah, he's, he's, he's an textual. evangelical. He's an evangelical yeah. Christian who's who's done a great job of giving us how the the canon came to be. Yeah. See, he deals more with canonical issues and textual issues. Right. Right. He's not necessarily. It's not that he's ignorant, but his specialty mm -hmm. is not historical Jesus studies. Not per se. I, I mean, he, I, he, he just doesn't takes have it any, as a given. That, yeah, he doesn't have any sort of standardized work. So, but, right. but you, so you're saying you. But on the other hand, his protege Bart Ehrman mm -hmm. is really interested in the historical Jesus question, yeah. and he takes it as a fact that oh yeah, it's ridiculous to question the fact that it could have been a Jesus. So couldn't have been. Who a Jesus are right. the sort of? They don't have to be evangelicals because like sure. John P. Mar sure. Meyer, who's a oh, moderate yeah. Catholic, yeah, Marsh, you know, wrote. And there, there's the, Jewish uh, biblical yeah. historians. There's a, there's a whole spectrum of. Uh, of people who uh, argue for historical Jesus, but the thing—well, it's almost everybody. It's, not, uh, it's, it's almost everybody. So but that's why thing, it's a whole spectrum. But but, but, but the, there is an important division you need to know, and that's um, especially Christian biblical historians. Their Jesus is not the same as the one that we get from secular biblical historians. And in fact, we don't get just one secular, you know, Jesus of history versus the Jesus of faith. We get all these different. Um, hypothetical ones. Well, yeah. you could say the same thing, even though it's a smaller field. You have the same thing with the Christ myth theory. You have some oh, absolutely. people who have Jesus. Absolutely. absolutely. He was a guy who really existed, but then, uh, you know, others, we don't, others uh, think that he was a real guy, but it was a lot of mythical. Yeah, or you people. have like he was just a re, uh, Paul invented him. Right. Uh, other people have the Gospels invented him. Others right. have, none of them invented them, and it was later Christians right. who invented him. You have, I mean, all and these it's, different... And it's this plethora of all these different possibilities and these different theories. That's part of the problem, is that 
we don't have any way in Jesus history, historical Jesus studies to pin down and say, well, okay, that's true and that's not true. We haven't been able to verify a single fact about Jesus' life that's not contradicted by in some other way. Well, and all that all these all these Jesus these hypothetical Jesuses we get from secular Jesus scholars, none of them are implausible. They all got good solid historical analogies, you know, that match them, and they all sound reasonable until you read the next one. And as I'm going to argue in my next book, you know, Jesus could have been a, a Galilean shaman. He could have been a, a zealot. He could have been, you know, um, just any number of these very plausible sounding things. But he couldn't have probably have been all of them at the same time. And that's that's one of the things that first started clicking with me in the beginning is that we really don't have a consensus on who this Jesus. Do you was. think that there's a, another historical figure? whose deeds, words, sayings, all of that has been more studied by a more variety of people than Jesus? Well, you've got people like Homer and Alexander the Great. So like all the all the, the all the major religious leaders like Siddhartha, the Buddha, you But know. yeah, but so do you you think there's an equal amount of what you might call Homerian scholarship as you do Jesus? There might Jesus? be there might be that for uh Muhammad might be. But I mean, Christianity is just a bigger religion. Well, or, so a, 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 a with fear conglomeration of religions, with Muhammad, if you're a faithful Muslim, say at the big university in Egypt, yeah. what happens if you say uh, Muhammad said this in Surah five, but I don't think he actually said it? What would yeah. happen? Um, so it's not there's, it's not equal because that doesn't happen in exactly. Christian universities. Nobody well, puts a death threat. Well, you, you don't get death threats, but your career death threats that happens quite a bit, and that's something I want to document in my next book. Yeah, is, is how so, how how little respect uh, Christ myth theory gets. In religious oh, institutions. Oh, well, Christ yeah. theory, see, that's because people view it essentially as a conspiracy theory that they, the, the that general crazy consensus yeah. is that yeah. if you think that, you don't know how to do history. Right. It's not that we're so scared of it. They, that's why real but, historians no, actually, don't what, what, spend time on it. Well, see, here's the thing. That's not what I think happened. I think it is because they're scared. Okay. Now, For, and I'll David, give you an example. You know that's I'll give you an example. Well, it's, first of all, look at the bias. I mean, it's not reasonable to expect that a Christian is going to... Let's talk about some seminaries. Yeah. Union Theological Seminary. Uh, let's talk about Princeton, Harvard. Yeah. I mean, are these bastions of conservative thought? I mean, th these are places that, if you read the scholarship, like like in Elaine Pagels, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, this is not conservative work. You know, you look at the, some of the big names, Marcus Borg, John Dominic Crossan, even some of the new guys, James Charlesworth, even, you know, Dale Allison. These aren't, it's, like, people who are, uh, you know telling the, the sort of conservative evangelical story. They all have... Th those are the b biggest... And that's guys. not what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But what I am saying is if you come from a Christian context, like if you're a current Christian, that's just a non-starter. I mean, evolution is less scary to a Christian than Jesus myth. Because you can shape your Christianity to embrace evolution. I'm, you can't do that with Christ myth. Yeah, but it's... See, it's, I don't think Christ myth uh, theory and, is and, scary and, at all. I mean, I just... I, but I here's... Think, well, what, what, how have I shown? Who's scared of it? Like, who really is scared of it? Because when the, you look at the way that that historians and scholars who have tried to put forth Christ myth things, and you see how instantly their career who, suffers. Who? Uh, Thomas Verena is one. I'm sorry, sorry Thomas Thompson is who, one. Who is that? Where did he teach? He, what year? He. Oh come on! Yeah. No. What? I, what? I, <laughs> he, the he is, taught, I never heard this of him. Was so I have to ask this was in the seventies. This was in the seventies. He was in American. In, uh, the theological universities, and now he's in Copenhagen because he basically got run out of America so yeah, for that. But he's still, he's still, but he was a he was a New Testament scholar. Yes, he still is. But you don't know he's the still school is. or anything. But he, what's his book? I want to say he, Talbot, but don't quote me on that because uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. I mean, what, I, what I'm saying is, I'm not trying to play gotcha. I don't know who yeah. I, I don't know who these people are. Yeah. Because well, here's here, my here's thing, here's all the names well, you mentioned. Second, well, okay, like okay, G, okay. for example, G. A. Wells, big yeah. proponent. He wasn't even a New Testament scholar, right? And he's, he's, he's not my favorite. And he's either. not even a he's not even a guy who does this anymore. Well, Robert that, Price, that's he's gone this. back and forth. G. A. Wells has gone back and forth. He doesn't even consider himself a mythicist. But he's, is, he just put out the air the, the 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 idea that this theory deserves more respect. So. What you're, it sounds like you're trying to say, like if people bring this up, that you know something happens. My contention is most of these folks aren't even in a position of teaching authority or oh, no. to even lose true. a position. Yeah, absolutely like, not true. So I, I, I disagree that this is what happens because you, know, you named a guy, I'd have to look into him. My, my, what I'm saying is this doesn't happen because no one that is a historian or a, new, a legitimate New Testament scholar, generally they don't even 
hold this story, they kind of dismiss it very contemptuously. So you're saying pe- they lose their they jobs. And here's what I'm saying. And, and, and again, I'm not going to ask you to take it on faith. You know, I'll document so this. So you're saying there's one guy you know. No, about. no, there's more than one. Read, yeah. read Hector Avalos's book, The End of Biblical Studies. Yeah, which is, you know, the whole book's a contradiction in terms. If the thesis is correct, the book's a waste of time. Well, I, don't, I think it's, it's a brilliant refu- book. It's I think it's a brilliant book. I, we, I, we can't know any more about Jesus because we know this, 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 and we, that makes us know we don't know no, this, this, this. So I'm going to write a book telling you about it to show that the Jesus studies are over because we can't do anything. Well, you see how it's self-refuting, though. Well, well, I do and I don't. I mean, he is a biblical scholar saying that his his field has become a joke, and in that sense, it's self-refuting. But it's self-refuting because that's the problem. That's the dilemma that we have to address. But for, for a guy to know that his field has become a joke, he would have to have information he's certain of to be able to level a critique or a reasonable a, a reasonable expectation that it's true. I mean, if he's wrong. People can address his facts and and challenge him, and that's what we should be doing. But I mean, I don't know. I just think it's a it's precarious for and and I I know not all atheists have to be mythicists, but I think yeah. it's precarious for an atheist to like say, here's the motivation, here's why this theory is not accepted, or here's what will happen. When when here's the thing, David. Yeah. All the Christ mythicists that I have ever heard of mm-hmm. are atheists or agnostics. Now I don't. You don't have to be one to be the other. I already know that. Sure. What I'm saying is, but, but why but, is but it think there? Think about that. How could it be otherwise? How could you have a Christian well, who embraces Christ myth? There's there's all kinds of people. But see, is the world made up of Christians and atheists? Well, no. But religious I mean, studies programs are. No, they're not. Yeah, yeah they are. I just, <laughs> yeah, they are. I, I guess it. It just feels I mean, like you, the entire you, field of. It's just simply not true. The, the entire field of historical Jesus studies has always been, in fact, all of religious studies. Let's name the big studies. names. Let's name the big names. Like I mentioned on a program, I mentioned even Rudolf earlier than that, from the beginning, the early even, German critics. Pretty, these aren't like this, I'm talking from the beginning of the, the the university system itself, not just the 19th century, not just the Dutch radical critics. You know, well, the university the major- system, the vast majority in Europe, was began by Christians. Exactly, so. that's what I'm saying. This all came out of a Christian context. Well, all modern originally. scholarship did, though. Not all modern scholarship. That's that. Well, that's okay. debatable because. Who, who was, but, was, but certainly who's everything. The of everything the is biblical. Everything that's the a biblical theological yeah. studies that all served theological purposes before it ever served secular. If that's the case, then how do you explain purposes? places like Tubingen, where uh, you know the so-called German higher critics, where everything is deconstructionism? It's right. not serving anything. Right. It's not serving a uh, well, it, see, a that's church the purpose. When you I say mean, if you read Wells Housen. If you read any of these guys, it just, it just, you have like a, if someone doesn't know about historical Jesus scholarship and they hear you talk about it, I feel like there'd be sold a, an incomplete, partial story that's not actually the current state. Like, they'll get an idea, it's a bunch of like pastors who happen to get deg- degrees and now write books on Jesus. It's oh, just no, I'm not saying not that. The case. Well, I'm not saying that. That's at all. what it sounds like. And but it's what I'm just saying is not true. What I'm it's saying not is not made up of a bunch of. When I say that, you know, that the majority of, of biblical scholars are Christians. I don't mean that as a slam. I don't mean it as an ad hominem. It's just that I actually am saying I'm not entirely sure that it's true, especially if you add up. Well, so I'm not, past I want, I want to make that. Years. I want to make that extremely clear. And when you say book, Christian, right? it's like kind of like what and kind of ta- Christian do you mean? Like, do you consider Elaine Pagels the same kind of Christian as like Dale Bach? If you understand, well, you take what somebody they like say, Elaine Pagels or Bart Ehrman, even those guys who are secular, you know, completely secular now. They still came out of a religious context. Almost every well, I can't came out of a religious exactly. context. Exactly. So it's exactly. totally irrelevant. No, it's like, not. It's, it's not. It's a genetic I mean, fallacy. It's not. And what I'm all I'm trying to say when I say that yeah. is that there's a. It's unreasonable to expect this theory to be accepted by the vast majority of biblical but scholars. See, you, that's all I'm saying. But, but what, regardless, you, regardless of whether it's true or false. Right. I regardless hear what you're saying. of whether you're it's saying true that's or false. That's why I won't get a fair share, a fair hearing, and that's. A well, shame. that's why I think it hasn't. Here, but I think right. gradually that's changing. But just, and I understand. I I know you don't. You wouldn't say. You would say no. It's of a different caliber. But just understand. Yeah. Like when a person has sort of. A classical conspiracy theory, and remember, and this is not a conspiracy some theory. Some conspiracy theories. This is are not true. a conspiracy theory. Well, that's but, where we disagree. Yeah. Some conspiracy theories are true. Like sometimes sure, sure. they're actually it's a real conspiracy theory, and it comes later that they eventually. But there's a lot of conspiracy theories that I think we we can know for certain. There's a lot more true. conspiracy theories than there are conspiracies. Right. Yeah. So here, that's definitely true. So yeah. here's the thing, though. They always have a way to explain why what they believe is not taken seriously. And it usually has to do with the motivational uh, intentions of the people in the power structure. So I'm just saying, to my ears, it, hears like, it seems like you're just saying, and here's why mine isn't taken seriously. Just like 
you know, JFK or you. moon and landing or whatever it is. And honestly, it gives me no pleasure to be on the outside of the consensus on this for atheists or for Christians mm. because I, you know, it doesn't really bother me when Christians hate my book because, you know, what else are they going to say? Hate your book? I just... But, I or when they disagree. When they disagree violently with the thesis. disagree but, violently. But, yeah, and you don't. And you're, that's why I love you. But I, there's atheists out there who do disagree violently with it, who'd say, oh, this is, you might as well be denying the Holocaust, you might as well be doing creationism, right. you know, and that bugs the crap out of me. And so this is a, this is a subject that I'm very sensitive about because, like, I don't do this for the money, I don't do this because I've got a, an atheist agenda that needs the Christ to have been a myth. I do it because when I look into history, and I'm not, certainly not the only ones that did this, there's like three ideas in that book that were mine, and all the rest came from across the political, the theological spectrum. Right. When I look at the evidence, for me, it doesn't add up, and all the evidence points in a different direction. And that crazy masochism of trying to follow what I think is really happened is what drives me. And it's not always a happy place to be, but it's kind of awesome too. So, um... Well, that sounds like that was our first part. Thank you. You did so good way to do it. <laughs> I guess so that first section.